We're going to talk a little bit about the, the technical aspects because I think it is important. Most Im important evaluation of aortic stenosis and regurgitation, a little bit of congenital disease, dissection, neoplasms, endocarditis, and some miscellaneous issues. Certainly, imaging pro processing is very important in, in imaging of the aortic valve. Certainly, standard axial images are also important. We'll talk about, but certainly the MPR view and oblique M MPRs are very important in, in CT imaging of the aortic valve. We'll talk about CINE evaluation, which really can be very helpful in evaluation of function and dysfunction of the aortic valve. Endoscopic views actually are very helpful to our surgeons, and I'll show you some important examples. And a little bit of volume rendering, but certainly for the valve is not that important. Again, mostly MPR and some CINE imaging are really the mainstay of imaging of the aortic valve. And again, this is really sort of a mock-up of, of the axial optimal oblique axial plane that we will be using to look at the aortic valve. Again, it's usually an oblique axial plane here, usually taken right from a coronal. When we do this on our workstations from this image, we then generate this view of the aortic valve. Again, oblique aortic valve, act, oblique axial MVR. Very easily seen the left, the right, and the non coronary sinuses here of the aortic valve. These are standard imaging that certainly is available on all workstations. And again, it's also important. This is, in many ways, this is the echocardiographic, the cardiologist view or the surgeon view of the arc valve, and that's an important anatomic view. Axial and oblique axial cine MPR images are very helpful. Here we can see the normal symmetric coaptation of the valves, the symmetric effacement of all the sinuses as the valve leaflets move. We can look at the normal thin um, uh, appearance of the valve leaflets, again, a normal appearance on CINE, um, CINE axial MPR images here of the aortic valve for evaluation of valve function. Again, some of the standard views that we will use, again, besides just the axial oblique imaging here, is a left ventricular outflow tract view here on the left. Very important and helpful Again, another view of the aortic valve, and particularly its relationship to the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And these are the anatomic relationships. We're important, um, certainly for our surgeons and our, our referring physicians for evaluation of the aortic valve. Here's just some images just to show you that this is really the kind of imaging you can do of the virtual endoscopic view of the aortic valve. For our surgeons, it can be very helpful looking at the relationships of the leaflets, the aortic sinuses, and in this patient who actually had a reimplanted coronary um, artery, the relationship of the coronary artery and their ostia to the sinuses and the valve leaflets. It can, again, can be done often in specified surgical cases where we will look at the aortic valve in these planes. Now, we don't really need to do, we don't need to do this, but I think this is sort of a glimpse of the future, what we really can do in terms of aortic valve Im imaging. Again, this, here it is, the uh, virtual endoscopic view in diastole. Here it is in systole. But again, it's sort of a picture of what we're going to be able to do in really imaging the geometry, the physiology, and the anatomy of the aortic valve with CT. Because now, because of multi-size CT scan, because of gating, we really can now image many of the mechanical valves, often free of artifacts. And that can also be helpful in terms of the geometry of the valves and the, and the mechanical valves for our surgeons. Again, just again, not really clinically often viable, but I think a glimpse to the future of really going to be, will be happening in terms of aortic valve imaging with CT. Again, this is a virtual endoscopic view of a Carpentier Edwards valve seated in the uh, appropriate position, its relationship to the sinuses, also the relationship here of the coronary ostia. These are the kind of visualizations that our surgeons often want to look at in terms of when they decide on 
valve revisions uh, in the future. Again, we can often, because we can, with, with gating, we can really look at the mechanical air valve also. And this is also gives us an insight to valve air dysfunction or function on these often routine gated images that we are doing often clinically in, in the workflow. So again, example of St. Jude's aortic valve here, normally. Coronal view, here again, a very important on the left, a important left ventricular outflow track view. And just have a view of this, this, of this valve in diastole and systole. We can also look at the relationship of these valves to the coronary, reimplanted coronary ostia here. Okay, these are now I think with many of the workstations are not very hard to do in terms of reconstructions. And when you are interested and have surgeons who are interested in the aortic valve and aortic surgery, these are the kind of images we can provide, I think. Now, in our assessment of the aortic valve, there are a number of questions that we have to ask. Is the valve and the root dilated? Where is the degree of calcification location? Is it bicuspid or tricuspid? Is there stenosis or regurgitation? Is there thickening in vegetation? Is there any pathology around the valves? And what are the relationship to the coronary arteries? Aortic stenosis, actually, which I talked to some very high tech Sydney imaging, but really very basic um, evaluation of the stenosis can be evaluated by just the amount of calcification in the aortic valve we can do routinely. This is a number, uh, a number of studies, a great study by Dr. Cowell, who showed that if we actually do a calcium score of the aortic valve, it very closely correlates to the degree or presence or absence of, of aortic stenosis. And very close you know, calcium scores over a number of 3,700 correlates very well with severe aortic stenosis. And again, this is the kind of mission we can do even without gating imaging. For instance, here's a patient with known critical aortic um, stenosis. Calcium score was, was over 3,500. This gives us an insight of the aortic valve and the gradient across that valve. No gating, no contrast, but again, it can be very helpful in assessment of aortic valve stenosis. Certainly with Sydney imaging, though, we can have some real views of degenerative aortic stenosis. This is a patient with moderate aortic stenosis. We can see the degree of calcification. We, th we can see the limited coaptation, but also excursion of the valve leaflets in this patient with moderate aortic stenosis. This is a patient with um, actually severe aortic stenosis. Again, with Sydney imaging, we can really see the relationship of the limited excursion, particularly of the leaflets here, partial fusion here between the right and left, and the limited excursion of this valve leaflet during systole. This is severe aortic stenosis. This is imaging that we can do now on gated CT when this becomes a clinical indication. Again, another nice example in the coronal plan of the same patient showing the thickening updoming of the valve, the degree of calcification, and as we see also, the expected left ventricular hypertrophy. But again, a very nice example of, of significant aortic stenosis in this patient. Now, while we can certainly understand stenosis, we can also get an insight into regurgitation because we can, in this patient with Marfan's disease, if we look right here, that that area of coaptation, which should be closed, there is a triang triangular opening. That valve does not completely coapt. This does correlate with aortic regurgitation and insuffic insufficiency in this patient, and we can define that. Again, because of the spatial resolution and gating technology, we can see it's fairly subtle, but this valve does not completely coapt together. These leaflets are not completely coapted. This correlates with aortic insufficiency. 